what is the Islamic ruling about lowering the pants beneath the ankles? Our Prophet wasallam said, whoever lowers his thawb out of pride, Allah will not look at him on judgment day. And our Prophet also said, whatever is beneath the ankles is in the fire. So there is no difference of opinion amongst the ummah that whoever lowers the garments out of pride, it is a major sin. Imam al-Dhahabi, in his famous book, The Major Sin, he lists to lower the garment out of pride. What is pride and garments and what is Zakat was showing off? Go back 1,440 years. Cloth was scarce. The environment, dirty and dusty. Generally speaking, at that time and place, out of common sense, out of utility, the garments would go lower than the knees to above the ankle. Why? Cloth is scarce. You don't want to get it dirty. Now, in every society, people invent ways to show off their wealth. In our times, flashy cars is an example. Suppose somebody got a Lamborghini, driving through parking lot. What is his goal? Show off. How did they have the Ferraris and the Bugattis? What did they do? Believe it or not, one of the things they did was, I have so much wealth, I can flaunt it. I can show you how rich I am. My garment is gonna go beneath and is gonna trail on the floor behind me because I can go home and wear something else. So having a thobe or an izar, a lower garment that went to the floor, that went below the ankle, it is an essential characteristic to show your wealth. There is no utility, no function, Nobody does it. You are standing out of place and you're making the point, I am filthy rich. So the Sharia came with simplicity, with modesty, get rid of this feeling. And so there's unanimous consensus, whoever does it out of arrogance. Now, within a century, the money began to pour into the ummah. Later, Sahaba lived much more comfortable life. That's why Aisha radiallahu anha, she died 57 Hijrah. She would cry when food was presented in front of her. She would say, we never saw this food at the time of the Prophet This is only four decades later. And she's now seeing a level of luxury that they didn't see before. Money is no longer scarce. So what happened? The notion of having the pants below the ankle became antiquated. And people now had plenty to wear. And so people began to wear below the ankles. So from the earliest of time, many of the scholars said these hadith apply when a society has it such that lowering the garments is a sign of arrogance to be technical so one hadith mentions the term out of pride another hadith doesn't mention the term out of pride it simply said whoever lowers the garment that portion will be jahannam do we take the out of pride in one hadith and we understand the other hadith in light of it that which is unconditional you understand it in light of the conditional you have a hadith that is unconditional whoever lowers the garment you have a hadith that is conditional whoever lowers the garment out of pride do we understand the unconditional in light of the conditional the vast majority of fuqaha and scholars of usul said yes of course when a condition comes another hadith doesn't mention the condition and obviously that condition should be cut and pasted to the same prohibition. And therefore, my dear brothers and sisters, overwhelmingly throughout Islamic history, our scholars have said, this prohibition does not apply to the one who does it out of culture, out of habit, if his society is doing it and there's no pride there. And they mention another hadith also found in Bukhari, which is even more explicit. And that is when Abu Bakr heard this, he said, Ya Rasulullah, sometimes I tie my garment, but without my knowing it loosens. The Prophet didn't say, it's okay if it loosens. He said, listen to this, you are not of those who do it out of pride. Now, if he had said, okay, it's no problem, you did it accidentally, that would have been a different interpretation. But he didn't. He said, what? You are not of those who do it out of pride. So in a society like ours, where the concept of having a pant below the ankles and pride has nothing to do with one another. And in fact, this is now the global culture. Then these hadith, therefore, do not apply. And that is why there are so many narrations from the time of the Sahaba and the Salaf and the righteous ancestors that demonstrate this. For example, Ibn Mas'ud radiallahu anhu, he had shins that are very thin and curved. And kids would make fun of him. Once in Kufa, his students saw Ibn Mas'ud with a garment all the way to the ankle. They said to him, aren't you the one who narrated to us that the garment shouldn't be below the ankle? So Ibn Mas'ud said, I am a man who has this deformity. Now, tell me, if somebody laughs at you, is that a reason that you can drink sharab? Yes or no? If somebody is going to make fun of you, if you don't drink sharab, can you drink sharab? No. 
because sharab is what? Haram. If lowering the garments had been haram, would Ibn Mas'ud say, oh, people laugh at my shins, that's why. So he allowed it. As well, Abu Hanifa, Imam Al-A'zam, the Imam of Fiqh, Abu Hanifa, Shafi'i said, all of mankind is dependent on Abu Hanifa in Fiqh. Abu Hanifa was upper middle class. He would wear fine Persian garments and his garments typically would go beneath the ankle. One of his students said, isn't this prohibited? And Abu Hanifa said, it is prohibited for the one who does so out of arrogance. And he himself had it both. The point being, the four madhahib, the Hanafi madhab, the Shafi'i madhab, the Hanbali madhab, and the Maliki madhab. And I have the quotes here, Nawawi, Ramli, Ibn Zayl al-Qarawani, Al-Baji, Ibn Qudama, Ibn Muflih, even Ibn Taymiyyah has this position. Very explicit. It is not haram to lower Lower the pants below the ankle for the one who is not doing it out of pride. And frankly, in this country and society, you cannot do it out of pride. You're not showing off when you buy your Levi's jeans and it goes below the ankle. And everybody has it. Now, is there another opinion? Of course, there's always two opinions. There is a group of scholars who says it's always haram. And these scholars, frankly, are in the minority in the grand scale of things. I would rather stick with 99.9% .9 of the ummah. And I'm not exaggerating, 99.9% .9 of the ummah. Literally, go through who's who. Now, are there scholars on the other side? Wallahi, there are. I cannot deny that. And if you follow it, Jazakallah khair. But give respect to the majority. Don't consider the majority to be deviant and evil and going to Jahannam. You follow your opinion, I have no problem. You will be rewarded for your sincerity. I have no doubt about that. But if you study fiqh and you study what the ulama say, you will find this is not the interpretation of the vast majority of scholars because the hadith itself mentions khuyala, arrogance and pride. To say, as the other group says, arrogance and pride Pride is one sin and doing it without arrogance and pride is another sin. That is the opinion that in Islamic history, maybe two, three people have held it pre-modernity. And in modern times, it has become revived and it's become mainstream in one group of ulama who think they're following the salaf, but the salaf themselves, I quoted you so many of them and that's not the case. So bottom line, the four madahib, all of them, this is the standard position that it is not a sin in the eyes of Allah if you do it, not out of arrogance, 